All right, our first step is to check the headset. Go through the cups and the bearings to make sure that they're okay and properly working. Here, I'm testing the new crown race. In my hand right now is the old one. I'm just doing a spot check to make sure that it fits the bearing. Here's the new one that I will be installing. Again, I'm just checking to make sure that it's gonna fit um, to, the, to my bearings or to my headset. All right, in order to install this, you wanna put the flat side on first. That's gonna go at the bottom, as you can see here in the video. And then make sure the uh, bevel side is up. That's what's gonna go into the bearing. Okay, in order to put the crown race on, you wanna make sure that the lowers or the bottom of the fork is well protected because you have to hammer this on. I ended up using an extension to a shop vac, which is just a PVC pipe that happened to be the right size. Go ahead and pound that on until it's completely flat. Um, our next step is to install the whole fork. This is where we're going to start to take measurements to see where we need to cut the steer tube. So here I'm going to speed things up a bit and I'm going to install everything correctly. You may even want to take it apart and redo it just to make sure that it's on there correctly. I'm going to be doing something different in this video, and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec, but I have added another spacer to the very top of the stem. As you can see here in this video, I have four spacers on the bottom. Each of those spacers is two millimeters, and then on the top, I have a four millimeter spacer. I am thinking about getting new a new um, handlebar, and in order to do that, I'm going to need to get a new stem. I'm going to transition from the 31.8 to the 35. Now I don't want to cut my steer tube too short, and then when I go to get a new stem and new handlebars, uh, run into the problem of not having a long enough steer tube. So I'm going to give myself some extra space uh, by adding another one of those 4 millimeter spacers. So the top cap is essentially going to go on, on top of that 4 millimeter spacer. And the stem is going to be in its original position, so it's not going to change the geometry of the ride. Here I've marked uh, the line, and that line is just the start you need to measure from that line two to three millimeters below and that's where you're gonna cut so here I'm measuring two to three millimeters below depending on your stem and then I'm gonna make measurements all the way around and that's where I'm gonna cut it if you cut it at that original line then your top cap is not gonna fit on properly and before you start sawing all the way, put a couple marks on the steer tube, pull it out, and see where you'll be cutting. You always want to measure twice and cut once. Again, once you cut the steer tube, there's no turning back. So please double check that. After you cut off this section of the steer tube, uh, you want to file down uh, the edges. You don't need to do a lot, you just need to do enough to where there's no barbs or sharp ends as you can see here in the picture. Next we're going to install the star nut. When you install the star nut you want to make sure that the barbs are pointing up. If you can imagine trying to pull the star nut out after you've installed it and you can think about how those barbs will catch. They will be going into the steer tube and you won't be able to pull them out. 
So I'm going to nail that or hammer that guy in there. And I've made measurements inside this, the steerer tube uh, to kind of show how far I'm going to go down there. And again, this just depends on your stem. For mine, I'm going to go about an inch inside the steerer tube. And I'm going to be constantly hammering and then double checking to make sure it's going in correctly. And I'm probably ruining my screwdriver right now. I apologize to Park Tool. I really do like their tools and use them a lot. Um, but this flathead screwdriver, the mini one, seems to work the best because um, it fits inside the steerer tube. So again, continue to hammer and then to check to see how far it goes down. If you hammer it too far down, then that top bolt um, is not going to be able to grab it. But then you don't want it too far up uh, to where it's not going to grab properly. Okay, our next step is to reassemble um, our fork and our headset, but this time we want to um, lube it up with some uh, some grease. So here I'm going to lube up the the two cups, and then I'm going to lube up the crown race. You don't need a lot, but you need enough. Go ahead and start installing the headset and again I'm going to speed this up it's it's not um, the main point or the focus of this video um, but again make sure you install it correctly if you have any questions uh, please feel free to leave me some comments and I'll answer those as soon as possible Okay, so once that's on there, go ahead and tighten it down correctly. We're not going to be doing any um, torque specifications right now, but do not forget to do that. So here, as I spin the fork, it's moving freely. Uh, there's no resistance. Um, everything has been put on correctly. My top tube um, fitted really nicely. Um, had enough space for that cap to just pop in there and the top bolt connected well with the star nut. Now we're gonna put the whole bike back together or at least part of it back together what we took apart. The last part is trying to decide what adapter do I need in order for my brakes to work. The Fox Float um, post mount you can if you're running 180 mil rotors you can just put your brake uh, caliper right on but since I have 203 mil rotors I need to use the post spacers again I use the Avid post spacers you can see here in the description I'm using the top one with the 17.5 mil spacer on the top with the longer bolt and then the 12.5 mil spacer on the bottom with the shorter bolt Please make sure you install that correctly. If you don't, you can run uh, the risk of ruining your caliper and your rotor. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer those as soon as possible. Also, check out the description box. I've made links to all the parts and tools that I use for this fork installation. Um, stay tuned for more videos and give me a thumbs up and subscribe.